as God forgives his people, or we as a people of God that are forgiven, how are we supposed to live our lives by also by, 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 by hearing the word of God? This is what the, what the word of God says. You hear, you heard about Christ, and we were taught by him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regards to your former ways of life to put, hold off, to put off your old self, which has been corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in, a new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new, the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor as we are all members of one body. And we give thanks for hearing his word. What happens when we die? It's a question that we've been asking for the last few weeks. And as we are concluding today's message is, which is the final victory? The final victory, which is found in 1 Corinthians 15 from verses 50 to 58. And this has been an interesting subject to speak about. I know that uh, often when I go into theological issues, sometimes I get criticized you and why you go into so much theology. But it's one of the things that I believe that we need to talk about because it's a subject that is often asked, especially in funerals, and are we afraid to ask the questions? What happens when we die? What happens when we go in the, in the grave, and then what happens afterwards? There's a lot of promises that are spoken in the Bible, and what we're speaking about is that these promises that Christ has given to us as believers. And as we are reminded of of our faith, of our hopes that we have in Christ, these messages are, are geared to help us to understand what is our hope in Christ. And in the first week, if you remember, we heard a, uh, an argument that Paul, the Apostle Paul was making on the case of the resurrection. And because of the resurrection, there's, which is the core of our faith, and if there's no resurrection, there's no Christianity. And if there's no Christianity, then our faith is useless. We're nothing more than just a good club that comes together weekly and, and but has no, has no value. Now, last week we argued that since Christ was raised from the dead and there's, there were enough witnesses of that fact, therefore it is a fact. And one of the things that I haven't mentioned, which is true also, that is mentioned in the scriptures that when Christ was raised, not only Christ was raised, but also people that had died were raised at the same time. And people were able to recognize people that had been dead for a while. Now, this is not just in the Bible that speaks of that. There were historians that wrote about this event that actually took place. That when people saw Uncle Bob walking down the street, and they said, well, you died a long time ago. You know, people say, you know, they have heard or family members when they passed on, before they passed on, they see people that have passed on before. And that is true, that, that there is a fact that the resurrection is real. And, and then we argue that most likely that every believer would also be raised when Christ returns. And last week we discussed that all things must die, and in order for us to die, there has to be a new life. And only happens when there is a the death. And therefore, death itself is not in vain. Just like Jesus resurrected, Jesus paved the way also for our own resurrection. So today we come to the end of chapter 15. And Paul is summarizing what he has been teaching, which is our hope. The hope that in which we stand on, our, which is our faith. And this is a hope that we have as Christians and believers. Let's pray. Most precious Father, as we come to your word, Father, we pray that you open our hearts, Father, and minds to receive your message. Help us to understand, Father, what is our hope in you, Father, in the things that we believe about the resurrection. Help us to understand and discern your spirit this morning, Father, and help us and guide us and teach us, Lord. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 says, What am I saying, dear brothers and sisters? Is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. It's an interesting question that, that Paul is making here because he's making a conclusion to what he's been speaking about. He's been, he's been explaining what is going to happen when we die. And as believers, we have been promised eternal life. And we cannot receive eternal life unless we first die. This is why last week we spoke about the, the example of the seed. If you remember the seed, in order to be fruitful, it must first die through the process of germination. We spoke about it last week. In order to be new life, there has to be death. In the same way, when we experience a new life and inherit the kingdom of heaven, our physical bodies must die. And if our physical body must die, then our spiritual must be raised. So, let me share a little secret. This is not my secret, but it says in verse 51, let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. Then it says, it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown, when, for when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we, have, and, and we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Last week we spoke about that a little bit. We spoke about that our bodies are perishable. It means that they decay. And as the body decays, even as, as we're getting older and older and older, our bodies are also getting decay. Because it's not as strong as when we were little ones. Today, little ones can be running around, they bounce off the floor, they fall, and nothing hurts. When we fall, it hurts, and it hurts a lot. And the older you get, when you fall, it hurts even more, and it hurts for a long time happens. And then when you see kids falling and you wonder, how come you didn't get hurt? And they just bounce out like, like a ball. They just move around like nothing. So our bodies is decaying because as we're getting old, but however, even though we are decaying and our bodies will decay, we're told in the last trumpet, you know when that is? When the last trumpet is? Is when Christ comes. We're told in the book of Acts, we're told, that when, we're told in the book of Acts in chapter 1, as all the believers were, were together with Christ, Christ was raised into heaven. And the angels told the disciples, why are you looking up? The same Christ that you've been with has been raised into heaven. And someday, in the same way he's been raised, he will come down. And we're told that when he comes, when he returns, there will be the last final trumpet. This is when the final conclusion of what the creation of God has created for us as believers will come to an end. And everyone else, for that matter, will come to an end. So we as believers, one, we have the hope, and second, we have the assurance that a new heaven has been promised to you and I. And this is when we say amen to that. Honestly, this is when we say amen. Because we have been promised something that those that don't believe in Christ, they, have, they don't have that. This promise has only been given for those that have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. This is why we tell the world about the gospel. This is why we share the gospel with the world. Because there's truth about the end when Christ comes. That those that accepted Christ will be raised and will inherit the kingdom of heaven. 
those that haven't, there will be a different end. For that reason, of all the things that we have spoken for the last three weeks, that the resurrection is a fact, this is why we're told to stand firm to our faith, to stand firm to the Word of God. Verse 54, it says, Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the Scriptures will be fulfilled. This is the Bible. is saying the Scriptures itself is going to be fulfilled. This is from the book of Isaiah. Something that Isaiah said, and also the things that have been said in the Old Testament are being fulfilled, where it says death is swallowed up in victory. Death has been swallowed up in victory. I want you to share four points with you today. And I want you to, as you reflect on these points, I want you to memorize what, what we're speaking about because this summarizes everything that we've been speaking for the last three weeks. The first one is there's victory over sin. There's victory over sin. Death is as common as the law of gravity. It's real. All of us will experience death. All of us have, we have loved ones that we have lost and they have died. And so death affects us all, whether we like it or not. And someday, death is going to knock in our own doors. And when death comes knocking on the door, you cannot say, go away. There's no turning back. When death comes, that's the end. But to the Christian, to us believers, death has no power over us. It means extinguished. For the sting of sin was buried in the cross through Christ, who bore our sins in his own body to the tree. Then the strength of sin is the law, but his obedience, Christ's obedience into his death on our behalf, met the demands that God had on, the, on mankind. We're talking in Romans 6, 14, it says, sin, sh sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under the grace of Jesus Christ. So that says that all of us, from the moment that we were born, we have been born sinners. We have something that we are born with, and that is called sin. From the moment that we are conceived, sin is passed on to us. So all of us are sinners. We're born sinners. For that reason, the law that was given to Moses condemns each one of us. And because the law condemns us, the law itself condemns us to hell. Because we are not good enough to live under the law. And because we're not good enough to live under the law, this is why God sent Jesus Christ to dispense grace, to give grace. Because it is through grace that we're clothed in righteousness. I will make each one of us acceptable to God. This was accomplished at the cross. At the cross. This is why we celebrate the cross. Because the, cra the cross means victory over sin. So there's victory over sin. And the, the next point is victory over mortality. Victory over mortality. Our mortal must be transformed into immortality. We have to go through a process of change. That, that change is only comes when we die in order for us to share the resurrection that was also done by Jesus Christ, but also when he comes again. And this will happen, I was told right here, in the blink of an eye, when death will be raised incorruptible. Now, we don't know when this is going to happen. We don't know when Christ is going to come, when it's going to come. But what, I'm, what I am sure of is that he will come. For that reason, we look forward to the day that when he will come, because when he comes, the last trump is sound 
it means that the church will be raised. Those that have died in Christ will be raised, and we will meet Christ in the air. And this is a promise. This is what we learned last week. We learned that our weakness at that moment will become strong. Our mortality will become immortal. And our perishable will become imperishable. The next point is that we have victory over death. Victory over death. Verses 54 and 55 says, Scripture, scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Christ himself took the same flesh and blood that we have, and through death that could destroy it, Jesus, he destroyed the power of death. And who has the power of death? The devil. The devil has power over death. And death has been sort of living among us for, since the beginning of time, controlling us and delivering us through fear because our lifelong experience is we're in bondage to death. We're in bondage to the enemy. And death has always been this monster that's been living among the human race. And Christ, in his resurrection, abolished death and brought life and immortality through the gospel. This is when we give thanks to God because it gives us a victory that only comes through Jesus Christ. There's a hymn that says, we got the victory, hallelujah. We got the victory, Hallelujah. And every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. That he is Lord. And then it says, Satan is defeated. Hallelujah. Satan is defeated. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. That he is Lord. Have you heard that? So the songs song you hear in the south and the U.S., in some of the more lively worship services, so we have victory over sin, victory over mortality, victory over death. And the fourth point is we have victory over the grave. Victory over the grave. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Paul is asking. The hour is coming. The hour is coming in which we all are going to be in the grave. But at that moment, when the final trumpet sounds, we will hear his voice. We will hear his voice, and we will be raised. First Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will be raised from the grave. So who are the first that are going to be raised? Those that have died in Christ. Do we have any loved ones that have died in Christ? Do you have any loved ones that have died in Christ? It means that when Christ comes, they will be raised first. They will be raised first. So we're told that first the believers in Christ will be raised first. And, and then those who are the members of the body of Christ, will share in the same moment, but also the, they were also going to be raised. And no longer we are going to be in bondage to sin or to death, because death has been defeated. And there's no longer corruption of the grave. So we're told in verse 58, So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing that you do for the Lord is ever useless. You know, often people will wonder, why is it that we do the things that we do? Why do we go to church? Why do we bother attending church? You know, it's just useless. 
No. We're reminded that what we do here is not in vain. It's not useless. This is a promise. A promise that we have in God that we need to stand firm and hold on to our faith. And to hold on to his word. Because when we hold on to his faith, and we hold on to our faith and his word, we are being encouraged by God. And these are words of encouragement. You know, often we tend to trivialize words. We call it Christianese words. We do that. And we are very good at that. You know, when people pass away or loved ones pass away, we tell, you know, it's okay. Someday we'll see them in heaven. They're beautiful words, but when you are the one that's experienced the loss of a loved one, when you are the one that experienced your loved one's gone, there's something that is missing, the person. No one can replace the person. There's a void that we all have. And it hurts when someone dies and it passes. Even though we have all these things that we remember and we are memorizing that, yes, someday we'll see them, but it still hurts. We still miss them. And it's a pain that sometimes it never goes away. And yes, we miss them because there's a void. But even though these words are reassuring and comforting, they cannot deny the truth that our loved one is gone. It's still a fact. What Paul is doing through this chapter is he's speaking of death as a destructive enemy. Death being a destructive enemy. But someday, death will be conquered at the end of this age. Death will be conquered. Death will no longer have power or control over us. So 1 Corinthians 15 enables us to acknowledge the truth that that our loved ones, even though they're buried in the ground, that someday, someday, we'll be able to hold them and to embrace them and to hold them in our arms again when Christ comes. And that is a promise. And the more that we speak about this in love, in the truth of the future, on what will happen when we die, will enable us to embrace our own present, knowing that Christ, the enabler, has given us this grace, has given us grace to have victory over sin, to have victory over mortality, to have victory over death, and to have victory over the grave. Let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you, Father, once again for your word. 